Hello everyone and welcome to the learning session on MSP430's first FRAM based MCU family, the MSP430 FR57XX series. This workshop walks through an introduction to FRAM, followed by a hands-on experience with the MSP430 FR57XX device. The discussion will cover topics such as architecture and core modules, differences between the FR57XX and F5XX families, peripheral modifications and enhancements, and highlight the key application areas where FRAM serves to differentiate. The session will also include two hands-on labs that walk through power measurements and clock configuration on the FR57XX devices as well as the memory protection unit, a key system block in this family. So why is TI interested in building a portfolio of products with a new embedded memory technology? Embedded memory technologies have progressed greatly in the past decade and are having to fit the needs of a growing market. Some of the most common requirements are lower power for greener energy, faster access speed, increased endurance for a longer product lifetime, and always lower cost. Through this session, we will walk through how FRAM exceeds all these requirements while being extremely simple to use and hassle-free when it comes to migrating from existing technologies. What is FRAM? FRAM stands for Ferroelectric Random Access Memory. As the RAM part of the name already suggests, FRAM behaves similarly to DRAM. It allows random access to each individual bit for both read and write. Unlike EEPROM or flash memory technology, FRAM does not require a special sequence to write data, nor does it require a higher programming voltage. But FRAM is non-volatile, that is, it does not lose its contents when power is removed. So why is FRAM non-volatile? This is because of the special dielectric material used in the storage, a capacitor, a ceramic that allows making use of the so-called ferroelectric effect. The term ferroelectric does not mean that the memory contains iron, the chemical element Fe, nor does it imply that the memory can be influenced by magnetic fields. In fact, FRAM is immune to magnetic fields. The term results from the hysteresis loop being similar to a magnetic hysteresis loop. In contrast to the magnetic hysteresis loop, the one in FRAM results from an electric dipole formed by zirconium and oxygen atoms in the ceramic lead zirconate titanate crystal PZT used to implement FRAM. What does an FRAM cell look like? A single FRAM cell can be considered a dipole capacitor that consists of a film of ferroelectric material between two electrode plates. Storing a 1 or 0 simply requires polarizing the crystal in a specific direction using an electric field. This makes FRAM very fast, easy to write to and capable of meeting high endurance requirements. Reading from FRAM requires applying an electric field across the capacitor similar to a write. Depending on the state of the crystal, it may get repolarized, thereby emitting a large induced charge. This charge is then compared to a known reference to estimate the state of the crystal. The stored data bit 1 or 0 is inferred from the induced charge. In the process of reading the data, the crystal that is polarized in the direction of the applied field loses its current state. Hence, every read needs to be accompanied by a write-back to restore the state of the memory location. In the MSP430 FR57XX family, this is inherent to the nature of the FRAM memory and is completely transparent to the end user. So where is FRAM useful? Here are a few applications that highlight specific areas where FRAM can be useful. In many cases, using FRAM is seen not just as an advantage, but as the only technology that will suit an application's requirements. For example, data logging today uses Flash or some form of EEPROM, and this works reliably. 
Here, Ephraim brings added value, because it can do the same things, but with lesser power, faster, and comparable cost, if not cheaper. However, from an endurance aspect, Ephraim allows a very high number of read-write cycles in comparison to Flash, removing the need for redundant data storage segments. Another example is in energy harvesting applications where FRAM is seen as a requirement, especially if any kind of memory writes are needed. The usage of a charge pump and high peak currents make flash technology less efficient for low energy profile applications. Today, there is no non-volatile memory technology that is as low power and as as fast as FRAM. So how does FRAM stack up to existing memory technologies? Here is a comparison of FRAM, Static RAM, EEPROM, and Flash. Three of these technologies are non-volatile, while SRAM is not. The second row in this chart compares write speeds when writing at an arbitrary memory block 13 kilobytes in length. FRAM outfaces both non-volatile technologies easily. Note that the flash write speed accounts for the time taken to erase a segment of flash before writing to it. Pre-erase is not a requirement for FRAM. When it comes to active power, the comparison is being made across devices rather than simply memory technologies. The MSP430 F5438 device, the lowest active power MSP430 flash device, is about twice the power of the MSP430 FR57XX device. At the 100 to 110 microamps per megahertz, the FR57XX leads the 16-bit MCU world in terms of lowest active power. With regards to endurance, FRAM provides a number greater than 100 trillion that is orders of magnitude higher than what Flash or EEPROM can provide. When it comes to bitwise programmability, FRAM is very similar to static RAM, meaning it can be programmed, read, or erased through bitwise access. In comparison, flash erases are usually segment-wise, while the writes are typically bytes or words in length. A new dimension that FRAM adds is the ability to configure unified memory. This means that a single block of FRAM can serve as either code, data, or constant memory depending on how it is configured. Flash was not the preferred choice for variable memory due to the erase time requirements, while SRAM was not the preferred choice for code storage due to its volatile nature. FRAM meets the best of both worlds in that it can be used easily for code or data due to its non-volatile nature while supporting fast writes. Here is an overview of the MSP430's first FRAM MCU, the MSP430 FR5739. The device has a maximum CPU speed of up to 24 MHz, while all FRAM accesses are limited to 8 MHz. The active mode power is the lowest we've seen at 100 to 110 microamps per MHz. The standby power numbers are around 6 to 7 microamps and are useful when applications have a low active duty cycle, allowing the device to remain in standby and consume very low power for a majority of the time. The device is available in 16, 8, and 4 KB FRAM versions with program code data memory partitioning, as explained in the previous slide. The device is also available in two packages, the QFN and the TSSOP, and in 24 and 40 pin configurations. This is the block diagram view for the MSP430 FR57XX family. The device features a powerful 16 bit RISC CPU, 16 bit registers, and constant generators that contribute to maximum code efficiency. The MSP430 FR572X and the MSP430 FR573X devices are microcontroller configurations with up to five 16-bit timers, a comparator, universal serial communication interface supporting UART, SPI, and I2C, a hardware multiplier, direct memory access or DMA, real-time clock module with alarm capabilities, up to 33 I.O. pins, and an optional high-performance 10-bit A to D converter. 
the modules highlighted in red, such as the FRAM controller and the memory projection unit, or MPU, are either new modules or ones which have been enhanced since the Flash F5XX series. Thank <laughs> you.